Okay, so we're going to move on to trying to make trigonometry that little bit more interesting and perhaps a little bit more challenging. I would say that this next video is going to be the most important video in terms of your understanding. So in class, what I would usually say to you is now is the time to really switch your understanding on um, as like full brain capacity, because this is a really, really important video. OK, so I'm going to start off. I want to consider a triangle which has got a hypotenuse of length one unit. So this is just like the triangle that I drew on the previous page. Apart from this time, I've told us that the hypotenuse of this triangle is one. And I've asked myself a question. How are the sine, cosine and tangent functions related to this triangle? So I'm going to add some things onto this triangle that we already know about. So we know that running along the bottom is the adjacent and we know that this side running along here is the opposite and this time the hypotenuse is one. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to do sine theta in orange. I can start off by finding out what sine theta is. Now we know that sine theta is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse is just one. So sine theta is equal to the opposite, which means that this side of the triangle, the length of this side of the triangle, is sine theta. Now, it's important to remind ourselves that this is actually a length. So however tall this part of the triangle is over here, this is sine theta, because the hypotenuse is 1, and we just get that sine theta is equal to the opposite. OK, I'm now going to try and consider what the cosine of theta is. So the cosine of theta is going to be the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. But we know that the hypotenuse is just one. So really what we've got here is just the adjacent divided by one. So it is just the adjacent. And I guess I could have done this over here as well. I could have said it's the opposite divided by one which is just the opposite. So the cosine of theta is the adjacent, which means that this line that we have along the bottom here, the length of this line is cos theta. So it is just the length. Now this one's a bit trickier to see, okay? We've now got tan theta. I'm gonna do tan theta in purple here. Now we know that tan theta is equal to the opposite divided by I never spell that in the right way around. The opposite divided by the adjacent. Now we've just worked out the opposite is sine theta and the adjacent is cos theta. So we can write that the opposite is sine theta and the adjacent is cos theta. So we've come up with that tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. And this is a very, very, very important identity that we've got here, that tan theta is actually sine theta divided by cos theta. But there's more that we can say about this. Sine theta is how much up and down it is going, whereas cos theta is how much left and right it is going. Can you think of something that describes how much up and down it's going divided by how much left and right it's going? In fact, this is the change in y and this is the change in x, up and down, divided by left and right. So what we're really saying here is that tan theta is actually describing the gradient of the hypotenuse. OK, let's just actually think about this for a second. Tan theta is describing the gradient of this line. Tan theta is the gradient of this line. So let's just let this sink in for a second. When you have a triangle that has got a hypotenuse of length one, the height of the triangle is sine theta, however tall it is. The length of the base is cos theta. And tan theta which we can see is sine theta divided by cos theta because it's the opposite divided by the adjacent, is actually describing how steep this line is that we've got here. So I'm actually now just going to draw a few different triangles and we're going to compare the sine, cosine and tangent of the angle. So I'm going to start off, I'll draw a triangle 
that looks like this. And then I'm going to draw one that's really steep, like this. Whoops. And then I'll draw one that's just kind of like in between. Okay, I didn't mean for them all to be in purple, but not a problem. Now, they're all going to have an angle theta. And I want all of them to have a hypotenuse of 1. Now, we've just told ourselves earlier that sine theta is this bit. Why don't we give some uh, angle sizes? Why don't we say this one is about, I don't know, let's pretend it's a small one, that theta is 20 degrees. This one here, let's pretend it's like 80 degrees. And this way, it's somewhere in between. Maybe it's like 40 degrees, OK? You can see clearly that in terms of the sizes, we can see that sine 80 is much bigger than sine 40 and then sine 20. So now we can start to make predictions about how big the signs of different angles are by how tall the triangle is. Let's have a look at cosine as well. So cosine, we know, is the bottom part of the triangle. And we should be able to make some predictions about which of these are the biggest. So it looks like cosine of 20 is the longest line. So cosine of 20 is bigger than the cosine of 40, which is bigger than the cosine of 80. So I'm just going to pause and quickly write those down for a second. For the first one, we said that sine of 80, I want this in the right colour, We said that the sine of 80 looked like it was going to be bigger than the sine of 40, which was going to be bigger than the sine of 20. And then when we talk about the cosines, we think that the cosine of 20 is bigger than the cosine of 40, which is bigger than the cosine of 80. And then the last one I wanted to compare is, whoa, we've got lots of colours there, is the tan. Now remember, tan is how steep these lines are. So I think this is the, the line with the highest gradient, then this one, then this one. So you can see that tan of 80 is bigger than tan of 40, which is bigger than tan of 20. So we're already starting to use this idea about sine, cos and tan, what properties they have on a triangle to make predictions about how big these things are. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, well, I could just put these in a calculator and work it out. But that's not what we're trying to do here. We're really trying to understand what these functions are. And in order for us to understand what these functions are, we need to think about how these sides on a triangle are actually behaving. OK, so we've been thinking about triangles now. We're actually going to move away from triangles and we're going to start thinking about circles. This is probably the most important bit of the video that we've got so far. OK. So I've written here the unit circle going beyond 90 degrees, because really here I can't draw a triangle where theta is going to be bigger than 90 degrees. I actually now want to see what happens if I go bigger than 90 degrees. And this is how we do it. First of all, it is called a unit circle because it is a circle of radius one. And the reason it's got radius one is so that we can use this property that we've got up here. This is going to be like the radius. OK. Now, it's a couple of things I need to talk about before we actually start doing any work on the unit circle. It says here that angles are measured anti-clockwise from the positive x axis. So this is the positive x axis here. And angles are going to be measured anti-clockwise in this direction. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a reminder. This is the direction that the angles are going to be measured in. This is just how we do this measurement in maths, OK? This is just something you need to know about how it is done. I've then got some language here that you may not have come across before. I've said that quadrants are the four sections of the graph. They are similarly labelled anti-clockwise. So I'm just going to add this to my diagram. This one here that I've got, this section, this is called the first quadrant, okay? So this is my first quadrant. Then they get labelled as we go around anti-clockwise. So this one is then the second quadrant, then the third quadrant, and then the fourth quadrant that we have over here. So this is my second quadrant. 
the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. And the reason we use these is it's just a quick way of saying where something is in, uh, in the circle. So the reason we use a unit circle is because we can now draw on triangles really, really quickly. So if I wanted to draw on a triangle like this, I would call the angle here theta because it's being labelled in that anti-clockwise direction. We know that the hypotenuse is 1 because this line that we've got here is just a radius. So I know that this is 1 and it is right angled. So what we should remember from the previous page is that sine theta is just how tall the line is and that cos theta is just how long the base is that we have here. And so my question that I've asked down at the bottom of the page is this. I've said, what can we say about the sine, cosine and tangent of obtuse angles? So far on this page, we have only been talking about theta being an acute angle. So we're now going to go beyond 90 degrees. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to draw a different circle on. So I'm just going to quickly erase this bit. I'm now going to do an obtuse angle. Hopefully you're thinking to yourself, great, obtuse angles are actually going to be landing in the second quadrant, okay? Reflex angles are in the third or fourth. So I'm going to draw in an angle which is obtuse, okay? So this is now the obtuse angle that we've got here. Now, if you remember what we said, the sign of the angle was how high up the line went. So it's this part is sine of theta, okay? It is how tall it has gone upwards. And cos theta is this bit of the triangle. It doesn't make sense to be able to draw it over here because there is no triangle going on over in this section. This is actually the triangle that we're visualizing here. And then last of all, we know that the tan theta part is describing the gradient of this line. So let's think about what we can say about the sine, cosine and tangent of the obtuse angles. To begin with, the sine of theta is this section that we've got going up here. And it looks like it's moving upwards in the positive direction. If we think about these as axes it does really look like it is going up in the positive direction. So I'm going to write down that I think that sine theta is positive. I'm then going to talk about cos theta. Now cos theta is this green line that I've got down here. And actually it looks like normally cosine was going to the right, which would have been positive, but it's now going to the left, which means that it is actually negative. So I would say that cos theta is now negative. And the last one that we need to discuss here is tan theta. Now tan theta, if you remember what I said before, it describes the gradient of the line. How would you describe the gradient of that line? Positive or negative? It is negative. So tan theta is negative for obtuse angles. Let's just recap. We've been able to do an obtuse angle by putting it into the second quadrant. To find out how sine theta, cos theta and tan theta are, we're able to draw on another right angled triangle. And that right angled triangle that we've got is this one right here. Sine theta is how high up the triangle is going and cos theta is how much to the left and right that it is going. Because sine theta is still going upwards, it is positive. Because cos theta is actually now going to the left of the origin, it is negative. And because the line is sloping downwards, tan theta is also negative. I'm just going to pause at this point here because the next bit that we're doing is actually exploring the unit circle in more detail. So this is just the introduction to the unit circle. If you need to watch any of this again, I really, really recommend watching it again because uh, it's a very, very important part of this topic.